Hey, it's JP Leggett. Thank you for checking out our demo video at Squiver. I'm gonna walk through account planning and relationship management natively in Salesforce. And with that, why don't we go ahead and dive right in. As you can see here, we've got a list of accounts in Salesforce Lightning. I'll go ahead and click on one of these accounts, which is Dunder Mifflin Scranton. Part of Dunder Mifflin Scranton has this account planning tab. Squiver is set up as components, so you can drag us anywhere on the page layout and render us in a very flexible way. As you can see here, we've got our Arc suite of products coming in, one of which is called Arc Site. In Arc Site, you're able to see your account and contact data coming in and any other data in Salesforce. We are object agnostic. Part of this is going to be able to leverage really the power of the Salesforce database, so it's very interactive. Um, drag and drop, update contacts is actually going to update your reports to field on the fly within Salesforce. And you can do this in a very seamless and flexible way for your users. What you see over here is all for those users to be able to not only get to your best points of view with your configurations, check out a great line of sight into how you're rendering your org charts. You can update any card formats, check out keys, group people as well. So maybe in this case, we wanted to see this per card color. You can label all the colors as well. In this case, we have favorite, maybe you have champions, blockers, or even neutral contacts on your account. Okay, diving into the account card, you can uh, really leverage the power of the Salesforce database. And so add a contact, send an email, add an opportunity, meeting or a task. You can score all your individuals. So in this case, really capturing, you know, what level of influence, relationship, power, and cadence you have, or you can relabel those, track any number of entries, capture sentiment on the fly, or even set the role at the account or opportunity level. Don't worry about if you've already captured the LinkedIn data, if you've got the LinkedIn URL or even the URL photo, you can point Scorver at that and we'll automatically render that. And really at the account level, we find sales, customer success, business development, marketing, do you like to collaborate? And really get down to that best point of view. So. Rest assured, this is one of the default views that you've got that account to contact. Show you a couple more. In this case, maybe you wanted to check this out per your account team members internally. So these are users rendering with your contacts. With all the cards, you can actually set up what we call custom relationships. Draw the line between the cards, update it, take notes, make sure you're rendering that best point of view. Just additionally, you can not only represent these object structures, you can actually narrow it in. Maybe you just wanted to show those green or blue cards, or we'll go ahead and show you these opportunities as well. So in this case, we have the account, all the opportunities on the account. Beyond that, you might go down another level and say, hey, you know what? Show me all the folks who have a role on that opportunity. This might differ if you have multiple opportunities on an account, you might have different people associated with uh, roles on each opportunity and you can quickly render that up here at the account level or even see it on every account, uh, opportunity as well. All right. So from here, we'll navigate back to our original view. We've got our account our contact, if you double click any of these cards, you can set those color codes, blocker, champion, favorite, neutral, or referral, or even at the account level, you can double click that and you can label these accordingly. By all means, you don't have to stay with both the color code or the labels here. Make sure they're most relevant for you and your business. Double clicking the card, you can also see which opportunities they might be associated with, notes, some additional details, but also I wanted to render what we call our groups. And so in this case, we've got maybe a change of the color from a color code on the account and art groups is gonna go ahead and flow in. This is based off a of rule um, based AI. And so in this case, we said we wanna render ideal customer profiles, maybe a leadership view, departmental or specific to a team as well. 
I'm gonna hone in on ideal customer profile. This automatically rendered your ideal customer profile per your rules and requirements. And so in this case, we said, you know, we're gonna actually identify what does that ideal customer profile look like and subsequently dive into who would be in that group. In this case, maybe we're selling to sales, customer success, marketing, um, or green and blue cards. Beyond that, we do uh, hold space for placeholders. And so here's a leadership view. You might require a CSO, CRO, a CEO as part of your uh, best point of view on your leadership view. And we've only yet been able to identify David Wallace, who's the CFO. Let's go ahead and make Michael Scott's dreams come true. We're gonna go ahead and update his title to CEO. If we scroll up, we're gonna be able to see Michael Scott flow right into this group. Now he's part of the leadership view and subsequently fulfilling that requirement of identifying the CEO for that leadership team. Don't mean to burst this bottle bubble, but we're gonna update Michael Scott now back down to that regional manager. Update that accordingly. And Michael Scott is no longer part of that leadership view. All right, so we've seen this now at the account level. I do wanna dive into our account planning suite of products. Here we have white space analysis. White space analysis is really gearing towards, hey, what's our priority on this account? Are we looking at a tier one, a tier two, or a tier three account? Beyond that, we wanna identify, okay, how much revenue have we captured with this account? And what does that look like per product or product family? So that's what we're doing here. We are looking at the current revenue, which is looking at opportunity line items or assets in Salesforce. Quickly rendering how much revenue have we captured? What open opportunities do we have and what amount does that look like? Where's our newly identified potential, which could be that cross and upsell that you're targeting. And that would equal your total future potential. You can set targets in place and you can automate to or manually update your both tiering and your revenue targets on your account. Below, you can see that broken out per not only product family or product that you've got, but also per buying center that you're targeting. In this case, we've got AWS, implementation, Microsoft, Salesforce, and software. And maybe we've got the ability to look at how much um, revenue have we captured per product, product family as part of that $280,200. 73,500 is that AWS offering. Fast forward and over to that cross and upsell. Maybe in this case, we wanted to have an upsell category for our finance department based off of our Microsoft product. Quickly updating that will not only update your upsell on your finance, it'll roll all the way up to your newly identified potential which updates your progress and potentially even your tier from an automated fashion as well. Finally, at, at the bottom of this page, we have art groups coming in. This is one of those flexible moments where you might say, I don't wanna see necessarily people in a specific group. I wanna see where are my opportunities per forecast category or forecast stage. We've got pipeline, best case and commit. You can certainly dive in, identify which opportunities we have in each of those forecast categories, update them accordingly, even have some uh, directional instructions here and or details with linkage coming into each one of these descriptions. Okay, so that's white space analysis, really getting you to what tier account do we have? Where's our priorities? And now what's our, our plan of success? And so in this case, we've got our action plans and visual action plans. Action plans are based off of templates in Salesforce, and you can manually add stuff as well. In this case, we've actually been able to render our account planning key tasks. Maybe there's actionable account plan here that has not only a number of tasks associated with it, product profile and white space, account plan, et cetera. You can actually assign all these tasks dynamically. You can target certain contacts here, 
You can update them as you go. You can add comments and it will render that completion percentage, both at that kind of singular header level on up to the overall percentage. You can go multiple layers. In this case, we often find on the account it's a 30, 60, 90. Maybe it's a short, mid or long-term status reports. And those are consistent of an, any number of tasks that might be associated with um, internal or external contacts as well. Okay, this is that list view of what you're looking to accomplish via your plan of success. From here, I wanna show you where that visual action plan comes in play. You can actually choose between list or a Gantt chart. Here is that same plan. We're walking through that same plan of success. We've got the ability to represent your Gantt chart view. You can double click, achieve all your tasks in line. As you walk through this, you can say, I'm accomplishing this in real time. Maybe it's taking longer or shorter. And it's highly interactive as you can walk through each step and achieve each task via your visual action plan. So now we've seen uh, list view action plans and visual action plans at the account level. I do wanna show you these at the opportunity level as well. And we'll go ahead and do that right now. By hopping back over to our suite of products, we can quickly see our open opportunities via our roles. And in this case, I'll go ahead and click on a net new opportunity. We've got our opportunity playbook rendering here. Here we can quickly see we've got arc site rendering. And in this case, we've got just the folks who have an opportunity role on this particular opportunity. This is a choice. If you want to default to this, you could certainly can, or you can walk back out to that original view. You also have your arc groups coming in. In this case, you might name these buying committees, RFP committees, or buying groups or RFP groups or other, depending on what's most relevant for you. Again, this is based off a of rule-based AI, so you can actually auto-populate these, have a lot of coaching mechanisms in the, in the description and linkage, and ensure that you're walking through your best course of action on every opportunity. Okay, hopping over to the opportunity playbook, we're gonna quickly show you, uh, in this case, you might have BANTS as qualification criteria or MedPIC or MEDIC. Uh, we've got MedPIC rendering here as an example of. And as you walk through this, you might have that same kind of methodology laying in place. Um, maybe in this case, we wanted to do some competition capture. As you walk through your plan of success, you're gonna be able to not only report as to where you are real time on every opportunity, but you'll be able to see who is responsible for what as you look at maybe filter by owner and or by users. You can see this in a visual capacity down here at the opportunity level too. You can see the full med pick moments here, maybe in paperwork process. You're able to double click on this, find out where you are from a legal security, commercial agreement and or signature point of view. I'll go ahead and close this one out. We're gonna close one this and I wanna show you how flexible this product is in context of record types. So after close one in this, we're actually going to see a net new renew renewal come into play. And it looks like we have multiple ones here, but as you can see here, we've got this renewal. If we look at our playbook on this particular renewal, you can quickly see a new playbook coming in play. For a renewal, you might not walk through medic or bant or whatnot, all of that qualification criteria. You might start to hop into what could be that shared project plan, transition over to from a customer success or to a customer success or renewal team from the sales team. Maybe there's some onboarding that we want to achieve as well. And from there, you can actually hop directly into your health checks throughout the year or those key moments that you want to ensure that your customer's life cycle is being optimized. Again, you can cascade these in. And as an example here, we might fast forward to negotiation review, make that a stage. And as we look at that stage being uh, successfully rendered, you can now see renewal paperwork criteria came into play as well. 
after getting into your plan of success, you can, from a leadership perspective, report off of all this data. Again, this is your Salesforce data. So if we hop back up here to more of a dashboard view. You can not only um, get into, hey, which tier accounts are we looking at and why? You can start to report off of how are we doing from an account plan perspective? What's our overall progress and what does that look like per account? Maybe hop down to that same viewpoint from an opportunity perspective. Do we have committed deals that are kind of missing key milestones? Where's our achievement level per those committed deals and or uh, best case and upside deals? Look at progress reports, check out how we're doing in context of maybe sentiment or uh, scoring, relationship scoring, and look at that over time as well. These are just example reports. Again, this is Salesforce data, so you can factor any other data points in. Make sure you're getting that best point of view on all your key accounts and important relationships in Salesforce. Thank you guys again for your time. Info at squiver.com. We'd love to connect with you guys. Um, if you have any questions, again, based off of Squiver, we do offer those three free users. Uh, if you wanted to get those on the App Exchange, you could do so by hitting get it now here and um, installing us in either a sandbox or a production. We do look forward to supporting you. Thank you again.